Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we're going to paint a pair yeah. in watercolor and paper. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. You can hear his disembodied, vo disembodied voice during the show. He's going to make sure that the cameras are pointing at the action, the colors I'm mixing, the techniques that I'm demonstrating and explaining, so that you can follow along at home and get a really great result. We have a lot of resources to help you. There's a traceable. Uh, this class, in response to you guys uh, giving us such great feedback on what's hard to see, I've even included a red line digital rendering of how the sketch is done. So even if it's hard to see on the paper, you're going to be able to see it clearly in this video. Let me know what you think of that addition. You can be watching off of Facebook or YouTube. This will be available for replay. All the resources remain free. Um, there isn't really a hidden cost in this. I tend to paint from the same palette week after week on the watercolors and the same size paper. So once you kind of get a sense of the materials and get them up, you can join us weekly for classes. Classes tend to be weekly. Sometimes we have bonus classes where I come in, I got some, I'm not going to have any extra time before acrylic April, but sometimes I have extra time and there's more watercolor. I also teach acrylic. Um, if you are very new to painting, uh, this is a great painting to start with. I would say the most challenging thing about it is the flowers. And um, you can always just simplify it to a pair if you're like, ah, ah, it's too much. That's okay, because it's all right to be there. Oh, I see Anna DaCosta and Nikisha and Grace and Terry and my moderators and Lilibel and all the wonderful peoples on YouTube. Um, oh, and I see Linda Sue and Heather C. So people are coming in. It's going to be a chill class today. I'm going to sketch out a pair. I'm going to show you how I painted this. I'm going to talk about the colors I'm using as I use them. You can use colors that are similar, but not exactly the same, uh, especially in watercolor, because those tend to be transparent. I'm on, here's what's important for you, the student. I'm on 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm using um, Fabriano's paper. I really like them very much, 140 pound in a block, which means all the sheets of the pad are glued together. And that allows the paper to restretch as it dries and flatten back out. Sometimes uh, warbling is really a problem. And when you're new to painting, that can really throw you off. I'm going to have my reference here and, and my original painting. I have to give it a counterweight, though. The challenges of, of YouTube life. Give me struggle here. This is almost funny, right? Just let's see pencils. Ah, pencils were the trick. Okay. <laughs> when you're going along. Hi, Mary Youngblood. So I'm going to sketch out uh, this uh, pair and you guys can um, follow along. Uh, however, John, while I'm doing it, I don't know if you can put it on a loop. Just can we let that uh, video right. just replay I, while I I'm sketching? Yes, we can. Let's do this. I'm going to slide it because I thought it would be someplace else. But let me just adjust it over here. Okay. And then what I'll do. I got to clean up the edges of my paper, my palette knife where I cut the edges for you was a little bit dirty so it left a little smudgy i'm using a kneaded eraser to clean it back up because i don't want to have to get a new sheet sometimes if you cut the sheets free with something that's a little bit dirty then they then they get a little bit messed up and use a pencil here i'm going to use an hb this is a number two pencil it is an art version of that pencil but it is the most common pencil you remember those from school hb pencils it's a, not a particularly dark graphite, so uh, it can be a little hard to see. And to that end, John is going to put this up and just let it loop over and over again so you can kind of understand what I'm doing here and see it on the red line there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little circle down here about my pear. And then I'm going to make another little kind of oval circle up top. I like to kind of gesture down a little line. It lets me know the shape of the pair. And then I will come in on the left side, come outside my little circles, and that helps me get my nice little kind of pear-shaped line. Once I have the gesture for the little stem, I can come up and make a little stem. And that is pretty good. I'm going to also tell, like, give myself a little guide to go, hey, remember there's a shadow here. Now I've got to put in a cluster of leaves and flowers. So what I find can be helpful is to come in and create small circles where I want the center of the flowers to be and big circles where I want 
the heads to be to sort of give me the direction. Like, so this is more of an o, like an o, o, oval, and this is more of a regular circle. This one is an ellipse that I bring down into a bowl. So that, that's been the feedback I've been getting. Um, we did some citrus drawing in the patronage, and that was the feedback I got that was hard about the flowers. It was hard to see the flowers. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do something like this for the patrons too, guys, where I uh, give you guys a digital rendering of the flowers. I'm gonna give myself a little leaf up here. And then also some little leaves kind of around. I like to tuck little leaves. They're fun. To keep everything sort of green inside. All right. Then when I get to the flowers, I'm going to make a line. Line. They're five kind of five pointed flowers, so that lets me know where I want to put the petals. They love your graphics. Oh, does that help a little bit? Just kind of like let you see what I'm thinking. What is hard to see here can be really problematic for you guys. But if you see it in that little rendering, it might make it much more possible to go, oh, I know what she's doing there. I like to bend these over when I want to curl them. Kind of like a little fold over line. So drawing can seem uh, challenging or overwhelming emotionally. But what I feel it is, is that drawing is one of those first art skills where people feel like it's okay to be really critical of children. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Huh. But they do. And they like to, you know, weigh in on big statements like that's good or that's not good or you know, you are worthwhile or not worthwhile in your artistic endeavors. That's not everybody, but just some people. And it can really throw us off if we get that negative feedback when we're young. I'm going to see what I can do to control. There we go. So there's, you can kind of see the lines there. And you saw, uh, Karen, I wish it was slower too. The app just I, records it at that speed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to advance it slowly. Oh, you're going to, can you do that? That's why I was like, put it on repeat. <laughs> No, it doesn't like me. Yeah, it it's just like was, I've got to find a different software bit. The, so I'm using the SketchUp and I'm just capturing the sketch as I do it, but it just insists on making it go that fast. I, if I knew before the show, I probably could slow it down. All right, next time we'll look at, I will look at the uh, slowing it down. I wonder So if, Mima, I wish it could be slowed down. Again, That the software captures it at that speed and it doesn't give me the option to speed it up or slow it down. I'm going to get a nice round brush. Let's see what I've got sitting around here. I've got, um, today I have in my Aqua Softs, I have a number 10 and a number 20, Soft Aqua. This is Imitation Squirrel. I also have my Jasper Stardust, which is a natural hair. It's an Escota brush. Um, I have some of these little squares here. They do kind of a nice little hatching if I want to do hatching. And uh, I've got some other details. So these are great brushes to be using. I've got my cup of water. And I'm going to be putting out colors as I go. I think I'm going to put out some of my Hansa yellow. I'm going to put out two yellows because I like to have two yellows. I'm going to be using Sennelier Aquiel Core Golden Watercolors and Daniel Smith today. This is the Nickel Ozel. And I'll kind of go over it again when we're talking about it. I'll be like, it's here, it's here. And then you'll be like, oh, I see what you're talking about. Let's come over here and uh, add a little phthalo green. I'll go over the colors again, point to them directly so you have sort of a sense of what's on the palette. I definitely am going to put a little uh, transparent pyro orange up here. Such a great color. In the Sennelier, it's very bright. It's brighter than it is in the Golden. You'll find pigments are not always the same across paint lines. Not unusual. Another reason why I'm like, yeah, you don't got to be too, too stressed about it. You don't need to put out a lot of paint. Um, I'm putting out even much more than you would need because it needs to show uh, on here in camera, but it doesn't really require this much. You could barely touch there and it would go a long, long way. Uh -huh. 
Jen says, thank you to, for doing what we do for the learning. Uh, Deanna uh, says that it was really helpful, but she's feeling like a mess this morning. I'll tell you what, I know how you're feeling. I am uh, kind of in a YouTuber crisis right now. John and I were talking about, like, what is the purpose? What are we doing? Do we want to, you know, what do we have to do to keep our what channel healthy? What does it all mean? What does it all mean, man? It's really hard. Life is hard. So sometimes we all have days like that. I'm going to take my big brush. Now, since this is synthetic, I don't have to prime it. You might not know this if you're very new to painting. Natural hair, you need to allow to be wet for a minute before you use it because it, it takes a minute for the water to soak in. On the synthetics, you don't as much. I'm going to get this brush wet, and I'm going to paint inside the pear and around the leaves and flowers that I have here. And this is going to be wet into wet. I'm not worried about my pencil marks. Those are okay to be there. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow. This is my Hansi yellow. So I've got Hansi yellow, Nickel Azo yellow, Thalo green, Quinacridone gold. I got a little burnt umber over here, transparent pyro orange, Opera pink, and Quinacridone magenta. And just in case I need it, I have a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to start with a bit of this. Of yellow, this primary yellow, it's so bright, lovely color. Get a little bit of my nickel ozo and a smidge of my uh, phthalo together and mix this very light color. If I have too much pigment, I can always pull a little bit off on the brush. And remember, I can also lighten with like a subtractive method, like with a paper towel. Oh. So right now, we're just getting a very light kind of color on here. Maybe take a little paper towel, a little bit. You could take a sea sponge too. And I'm going to come in here and just sort of pull a little bit up. I really like the texture. Honestly, it's kind of nice. I'm going to get a little bit of my, my pyro orange and my opera pink. You see it makes this kind of wonderful little peachy color. This is still wet, right? Yeah. So I'm going to just come in here and just kind of put a little bit of pink blush into this space and rinse out my brush here and soften it up with a little damp brush. Isn't that lovely? It is. It's just kind of a pretty, pretty space. I'll let that have a minute, I think, on its own. And I'm going to get my number 10, just a smaller round, I think. And I'm going to, not with water preemptively on here, I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone gold and my phthalo green. And with some control, I'm going to paint inside and around the flowers. And that's why I wasn't necessarily pre-wetting everything. Even though I can let it bloom up there into the pear, that's okay. Where I'm trying to put a very dark green. In between the flowers. The start. A nice start. Anacridone gold and phthalo green. Let's darken that in here. I'll just take the toe of my brush and irregularly kind of move this around. And because it's now wet, what's going to happen is it's going to travel through all the places that are wet.
and you can paint between the petals. Rinse out a little bit, maybe get a little more of this green, make sure that I've got a nice Make sure that those areas around the flowers are finished well. I gotta go into the pear. I can be a little regular with my brush. So even if it's dry, we're not making very uh, consistent, orderly little brush strokes. Because pears have a lot of texture. And I'm gonna take this brush, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna bring a little texture around. And having fun with this, guys. A little bit of that. You can get the um, quinacridone gold into that. If you don't have quinacridone gold, a burnt sienna will work well. Uh, I think it was Eddie Izzard who did a whole set on pears. I think that's totally possible. Um, and Terry says, tomorrow is the wolf moon. Are there any other moon watchers? Uh, I'm not seeing the chat from Facebook. If you can check that, John, because I am. Oh, yeah. I know that you're excited about moon night. At the new uh, Marvel. <laughs> yes, I am excited about all the new Marvel movies. It's a problem. You know what the problem is? Is that it's really hard for me to see the chat in. Uh, there should YouTube. be I, I on found, Skype. Uh, I had to do a. It's uh, a journey. Uh, yeah, but not. There's that now. I'm just coming there in a nice darker line there. Every time I paint something, the thing about painting every day or even having to paint studies and then coming in and painting these lessons, um, it's really powerful. I was in the Who Am I as a YouTuber journey because um, I have the acrylic channel and my uh, watercolor. I was looking at the idea of doing some videos where I show you the pro progress I've made in 10 years or 30 years because I have... Uh, <laughs> you have a huge purpose keep art alive <laughs> i like that i like fruit colors and we do have a dick flick list if you don't want to use the amazon store um so i was like thinking about doing some videos where i show you what how much growth i have personally had from a daily painting um even over 30 years from like 30 years ago to today um it's it's sort of like fascinating to see how we grow as artists and I think you know I just haven't figured out how to tell that story because I don't know do I want to show you how to paint the finished piece you know uh foxes are interesting because I've done the fox like I don't know so many times <laughs> he said so many things I'm coming in here can you see how I'm just dancing the little toe around and it's giving me some little pear little pear pear all I can come in with maybe like a little darker tone that's kind of nice isn't it isn't that a lovely texture on the pear today yeah. all right now up in the stem I'm going to maybe pre-wet the stem and I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone gold down and sort of allow that to bloom into the stem see how that's doing rinse out i'm gonna get a little Payne's gray very few places look how lightly i'm touching that a lovely little stem isn't it yeah and a little bit of our green A little bit more of the quinacridone gold. A little bit on the edge here. It's just sort of fun. Keep that light on the toe. Right? I'm 
I might get a little of my gray and green and gold together. Look at that wonderful color, right? Very wonderful and muted. Oh, that's very nice. Hmm. Thank you, Darcy. Darcy, thank you. She said to hear me scroll back down. Uh, Why are my comments not showing? There. Darcy have given me a whole new purpose on TV. Has given a whole new purpose. TV Sherpa. Thank you. I'm so glad. And sometimes it will look like, like your comments are not showing on Facebook, even when they are. It does it to us too, if it makes you feel any better. I don't know that it would. And I know that several of you got kidnapped into an unexpected morning chat. What we think happened is no, I didn't get hacked, but we do think that there's maybe an artifact from like when this show was on in the evenings. That we enabled a feature that hasn't been enabled in a while, and it just kidnapped you into that moment. But it might be a good thing. So we're going to look at see if, like, hey, is this, like, one of those, like, happy accident, blessing kind of moments? Because they happen, right? They do. Just creating little bits of texture. I like it. I like it a lot. So the other thing that I can do, this is a bright, it's a number 10 soft aqua. I literally gave this away at my retreat because people were so in love with it. It's a fantastic brush. Um, uh, Nancy Mazzaro says, I was wondering about blooming. Now I get it. That is, I love to read that. And uh, Lulabelle was gifted Senelier watercolors recently. That's a kind of blessing, isn't it? And Tabitha, this is not acrylic. This is watercolor. Yeah. You can do um, some of this uh, with uh, acryl uh, acrylic. There are many techniques. I'm going to get some of my quinacridone gold and a little of my yellow. Maybe tinted with that green. I'm going to come here. And you're going to see that I'm going to take my brush. And this is like a dry brushing. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Different technique. Unexpected techniques. This works. Uh, you have to have a dry brush. It works best if the brush is dry. Doesn't work particularly well when the brush is wet. Huh. Use some green. So I can use localized color. And get into that like gray green. Kind of like. Softening those colors, right? Darcy loves your hair, too. Oh, thank you. So I um, I post on TikTok about it, like the before and after. We didn't even have a plan um, at the salon this time. And I kind of had some idea where I wanted to go, but not completely. This and, time? <laughs> and um, I was, it was six hours trying to get the purple out of my hair. And it never really quite came out. So we were trying to decide like where color things could go. And I think we ended up unintentionally with Hello Kitty hair. That's that's what I'm going with. Um, Cinnamon's Happy Taps are always so organic. Mine look forced. So let's see if I can maybe, I'm going to do this on the back of this. If someone ever buys this, they'll know it was from, from this. So when I'm doing this, I make sure to keep a light touch. And to really randomize. Now, the brush does help some, guys. It doesn't fight me. It would be harder to do with a different brush, maybe. Not always. If I do get wet, I use a paper towel to wipe off so I have some control. You can see that it's a little feathered out. And I try not, like, I wouldn't make a, see, that would be very hard to feel organic. You've got to break it up. I don't know if this helps or... Um, is what you meant, but this is sort of how I get there. Yeah, purple is hard to remove from light colored hair. It's super hard. This is, I really love this brush. It is the Raphael Soft Aqua. Here's my relationship to the company, FTC compliant that I am. I am friends with uh, the people at Savile Fair. I am friends with the uh, founder, and I'm friends with the head of material science, and I love everybody over at McPherson's. I do have like personal fondness and they send me stuff because I like it and I yes. use it. 
So that and, is the relationship. And but they want to support free art. People send me stuff all the time. I don't yep. show all of it. Nope. Now, if you just recently, there's a company that just recently sent me stuff and if you're sitting there going, oh no, <laughs> when is my stuff going to be on? Oh. Uh, I'm still, I'm putting together something for you. You guys are going to be on. Yeah, there's a, there's some, we have some cool stuff from companies that sent us stuff and we always have to like play with it a little bit before we show you guys because it's like, you guys seem pretty cool. All right. You're not like shaking down the consumer. You have tech support. There's like, you're based in Chicago. You got all sorts of cool stuff happening. Yeah. It's just good to see what's going on out there, right? So I am just tapping and being very gentle with the brush. We're doing that technique that we saw earlier. And it just gives our pair just a little bit of a little bit of perfect pairness. Perfect pair. It's perfect. You can always come back with a damp brush if there's any of this you want to soften. And that's an important thing to realize too. You can soften. You can you can make more gentle. I'll leave that there. I really like that. I'm just happy with the pair where the pair is right now. So I Martha's just wanna... very happy with your hair. She says it rocks. I'm really liking it. I I you know, we were talking about if we would come in and do touch ups or foils or anything, but it just I like it got curled and I was like, This works for me. She had she had lock curls like I don't know. I'm gonna get I'm gonna take my small number ten and I'm gonna work on my leaves a little bit. I had lock curls. You had those those cur you know, like the little spinning Oh, that's because uh, my hairdresser is a girl named Rhiannon, and she can do that thing with the flat iron where she does the little rolled curls that go back beautifully. I'm like hot rollers. <laughs> I just that's where I'm at. That's my truth. Uh, I'm hot rollers. Now, are you using any sulfates? I am not. This is, there's no uh, oxgall in the water. This is just these paints and their properties. What's sulfacant and what's oxgall? Okay. Sulfacants or surfacants? I don't know. Somebody asked. Um, oxgall is an additive to your water. And what it does is it reduces the surface tension in the water and allows the pigment to bloom further. Some, um, some watercolors don't have as strong of a bloom. And so when you add things like oxgall, it blooms more? Yeah, it'll it'll have more of a bloom. It'll have more of a journey. Oh, I'm going to use my different greens. I'm going to have uh, dark greens here towards the back. It's like our kids don't know that we have a YouTube studio in the center of our house. <laughs> <laughs> they just see packages of balloons at the bottom of the stairs and come down screaming like they're a 12 year old. No, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> Except when she broadcasts. I'm doing a very light green here, which is my nickel ozone, a little bit of my um, it's okay. halo. And then I can come in and get this darker and allow it to sort of bloom and soften. Can you guys see how it does that? Uh -huh. So that'll create a bit of a more diffused edge, even before I come in with texture. Ah. Uh. I guess that's the great experiment of Gen X. What? What's it like to raise children deeply steeped in sarcasm? You know, I think there's goods and the kids have told us that there's good and bad elements of it. The kids <laughs> like to give us feedback and they have, there's stuff that they have enjoyed with, about us as parents and things they have not enjoyed about us as parents. You know, I am... Um, Art okay. for this generation. Nancy says, this is, this is actual artwork important stuff. So I'm going to ask. Mm. Um, she says, can you repeat what you just said about using acrylics to do watercolors, please? Nancy says. Yeah, so acrylics actually will work in many of the watercolor techniques. You would just be thinning the water uh, acrylics down with water. Um, the fluid or high flow acrylics work a little better than the heavy body because they're more pigmented. I did a, um, I don't know if the mods, uh, there's a bird that I did with pine cones, that snowy bird that I did on paper where I showed how to paint uh, with acrylics on watercolor paper. And um, it's, I, I do it for life book too. It's really nice. The difference is, is that when the acrylic is dry, you can't reactivate it. And eventually the paper stops being absorbent and starts to seal up from the acrylic polymer. 
and then you start doing dry brushing or traditional acrylic techniques as you build up. It's like coloring uh, with markers on a coloring book as a kid. You get like one pass with the marker and then after that it disintegrates into a little ball of felty mess. Um, so you got to be like, you get like one, one go to get that cool effect and then it's just acrylic layers. Right. But it's, it's more than you think. Oh yeah. No, it's easier cool. than you think. Yeah. Just doing these light uh, greens up here. I'm just like watching her do this for a I long know, it's, time. <laughs> he really has. Like this is John's whole life. I am the most professional paint dryer watcher I know. Like you could have a fantasy art league. <laughs> paint watch professional. Dun, dun, dun. I have more hours long of watching paint dry. There. I don't know. I take that back. I think that like 3M has a lot of hours logged of videoing paint dry. I think 3M does? I thought they did like tapes and, and adhesions. Yeah, and yeah they got well, they got all sorts of adhesions and how adhesions come on and off of paint and how that affects they they have paint adhesives and paints and is it down. They have all like, the things. They got all the things. All right. I'm gonna make a darker green here. Chemical paint companies probably watch paint dry as much as All I right. do. I'm just using my quinacridone gold and my phthalo green. This is one of my favorite green mixes. Um, again, if you can't get quinacridone gold, you can always get burnt sienna. Um, and what paper was this? This one is Fabriano 140 pound. Uh, this one is the traditional white, not the extra white. And it's in the block, which means that even as it's wet, it doesn't warp as badly. And then as it dries, it restretches. In other words, it gets flat. Nancy says, thank you very, uh, very much. Very helpful. Coming in with a darker green. You are so welcome. You guys are all really super duper welcome. I am very grateful to be able to do this and to have been able to do this for this many years. It's really, really a blessing. It's awesome that Lula Bell's Chilling at the end of her day. Yeah, it's Enjoying good to chill. Some little chillaxing. A little bit. So I'm just putting in those lines, those little shadow lines, those little leaf lines that we're also familiar with. <laughs> Amy's like, we should switch and I'll teach the lesson and you shoot the camera. And then you know what'll happen? Nothing. There will be no video because I will never show up. So John was pitching different videos at me. I follow my own tutorial. <laughs> I was just like, that would be awful. Oh, I think Cinnamon following her own tutorial would be awesome. <laughs> but me following one of Cinnamon's tutorial would not happen because you would have to green screen me out. Yeah, John has uh, uh, anxiety of being on camera. You know, I could wear a green screen suit. You could wear a green screen suit and, then, and he would be, okay, that would be all right for him. He could do that. Yeah, he could. Then you could turn me into like. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, yellow. You know, it's really awesome. I'm bringing it up into the petals a little bit. Is that we can put our viewers to sleep. Did we put everybody to sleep? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Everyone in chat. We're talking about, oh, it's really nice to watch Luna as I can, or uh, Cinnamon as I watch the day drift away. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> ASMR! Woohoo! Oh, Heather C., thank you so much! Uh, John, you have gone live and done just fine. What it was I... not fine backstage, Amy. What was I doing? Um, you the... painted the, uh, Morlock and I switched the camera. But okay. the day that Spider painted the mushroom was because John had a panic attack about going live. <laughs> Spider like... was like, I've got you, dad. I've got you. He was in. I'm taking that dark green and I'm going to, my little brush here that I made my little lines with, and I'm going to maybe add some of these to the leaf. So when you're like, hey kid, where'd that 10 pound ham fist come from? He, he comes by it naturally. I think he does. I think he does too. <laughs> I 
All right, there we go. Just enjoying that texture and everything on those leaves. You guys have this, you're good. You know, you're good, you're good. You know you're good, right? Oh, yeah. Amy asks, were you at some convention that you went live at? Me? You? Me? Have you ever done that? But live have I been at a convention and gone live? Yes. Yes, I have. You might be doing um, it again. I did NAMTA a couple times live from NAMTA. When, when the brushes first happened, I went live to announce it. And it like really freaked everybody at NAMTA out because they were like, that's like a lot of people who are interested in these brushes. And then for like a half a second, Michael was wanted to talk to me. And all the art stores wanted to talk to me. It's really they want to talk to you. Yep. You're what they love. So it was kind of, it was fun though. It was very fun. I'm going to get the flowers a little bit wet on the petals. Just a little bit. I think I'm going to come get a little of this pink. Ooh. And just touch maybe a little teeny tiny bit of it not a lot i want it to be super delicate at first and i'm gonna do this on all my little petals i had a lot of fun oh, you had a huh i don't know Um, this year, if I do go to NAMTA, it's actually open to the public. So you could come meet me, see me at the art booth I would be in. I've done if I go many, many conventions over the years. I don't know that there's any video out there out of me doing conventions outside of this. No, in fact, if whether I'm there or not, I think I'm going to be there. But whether I'm there or not, you should go to NAMTA in Orlando if you're in the area. Because it's a mashup of Creativation and NAMTA. NAMTA is the North American uh, uh, Material Trade Show Association. So it's everybody that makes the paint. If you want to meet Mark Golden and ask questions about paint, <laughs> he's probably going to be wandering around. If you want to see, uh, you know, any art material company, if you want to go, like, uh, see all the stones and talk to the people of Daniel Smith, you can do that. The, you could meet Pierre in person in San Alley, And it's really fun. Like, the people of Carondosh, they're really fun. So um, if you love art materials, that's fantastic. And then Creativation is there. That's sort of the paper crafting community. And so. Um, I suspect the video that she's talking about was um, back when we went to VidCon. Oh, could be VidCon. We did VidCon and we did ClamorCon. Yeah, I think the one that she's talking about was VidCon. Um, that would be a while ago. Yeah, but every... <laughs> Uh, the, the, her question, you know, it's like every interview was at a party that was really loud and with some guy that I was talking to. It is true. So I got a little pink on those flowers. I really like that. That's kind of lovely, isn't it? Kind of wonderful. Now, while this is having a, it's having a thought of itself being dry, I'm going to go ahead and get my brush and come under here and wet away from my little pear. I very carefully paint around my leaves. And take a little of my quinacridone and a little of my ultramarine blue. And start to apply the shadow. Because you have a little bit of a shadow coming out. That's the th right. that's a thing. And you know, in the world you want to talk about with your with your color if you can. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. She sent us a big ball of stars. It was only you, John. You guys still lived in Texas. Could have been anything in Austin, could have been a 
game yeah, festival. Yeah, he, he would go places. John went I, places. And I did I did work. You did that Hot Springs, Arkansas, where you were out wandering around at the film festival. Yep, I and I also did a bunch of contract work. I'm going to take my work. bright and my little blue, and I'm going to make some hatching in here to create some little shadow texture. There's a short period of time there where I was also doing some contract work, so it could have been that. There was stuff. Yeah. There was definitely stuff. Just trying to create a nice little cool area of light, and then we'll come in and we'll do a little drop shadow on this, and like deepen some shadow and really get this to pop, but that's just the starting place. While all this is having a dry, I'm going to go ahead and take a little of my uh, Payne's Gray and my Quinacridone Gold together. Maybe a little more Quinacridone Gold. And sort of define some little... Uh, stamens little bits of the dots that come up from the flower oh, you know what i'm yeah. talking about they get a little zoomy on little tappy 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 kind of here and there and then some lines you know that could be them sometimes it's just the little A little bit right there. A little bit of our pink and our... Capture some of the... Maybe harder lines on the flowers. Ah, that helps them kind of have a little contrasty pop. Just a little definition, right, guys? Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my ultramarine blue and my quinacro magenta, kind of make that little purple. Start to come in under the pear with uh, perhaps a darker kind of little shadow. Yeah, you want to get in there and get that dark. Makes that shadow have weight to it. Yeah, it needs to have a little bit of weight. And then we'll pull that shadow a little way from that leaf. So it's a bit of a drop shadow. And a little darker where the leaf would be closer to the ground. So do you see how that's created? Yeah. A little bit of that purple again. Very nice this time.
darker shadows into the flowers if you want to even. That's looking good. Fun little watercolor. We did a little pear study. Look at us studying the pears. What? We're still amazing. Because every once in a while, you got to come revisit the pears. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Just to make everybody in Big Art Quest a little nervous. Huh. Just a little bit of, you know, light and effect and everything happening in all those little places. Oh, I just really like this today. It's a really lovely piece today. I might come in with a little bit of my dark gray. And give some little detailing to the stem. Because I feel like it would happen. You forgot to move the camera, baby. There it is. So what I did is I came along the little stem here. Ah. And I just added some little details. I was over looking at the other screen. Yeah. You were looking at the other screen. All right. Guys, this was really good. Do we have uh, any questions before we uh, journey just, away? Uh, revisit, like Sandy, I think, out here a little late. She just wants to make sure you revisit what paper you're using. Just cut, touch base on what your materials are. I think. Okay. So I'm using Aqua uh, Raphael. It's by a company called Raphael. They're a very old company out of Germany. I've um, been making brushes forever and ever and ever. And this is their line of soft aqua. And this is an animal free product, but it performs like it's real hair. I love it. This crazy palette you see is the Tom Lynch palette. I am using Fabriano, 140 pound paper and a watercolor block. I'm using a mix of Aquail uh, by Senelier. They're fine watercolors. That's the one with the honey. Uh, Core watercolor by Golden and Daniel Smith. Now, if you want to just see everything that I have in my, except for the Jasper Stardust brushes, which I didn't use today, but he's on Instagram. So you can see his work on Instagram. He takes really amazing fine art brushes and turns them into magic wands. Um, you can go to the Amazon store. I think the mods have the link. They can share the link to the Amazon store. Or you can search the Art Sherpa and I think find the Amazon store too. I think it's, yeah. I think it's locatable. And it's in the description. If you look at the description, it might even be pinned. Um, there's a list of products for watercolor and that's everything I ever use, um, or have talked about in my courses. You don't necessarily need everything in the list, but it's everything, um, that I personally use and have tested. Uh, the only caveat I will say to you guys about Amazon is sometimes if a product get po gets popular, the prices are automatically raised. I don't like that. So always search your prices. There's a website called Camel, 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 like Camel said three times. And you can put any price in on any listing from Amazon and see if it's gone up. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And then it, if, or you can just use that list as a list for shopping and look for Jerry's and look for Dick, Dick Lick and uh, Cheap Joe's and well, that's a good question all the Nancy. different places. Hmm. Would you do a background color and let it dry first if you wanted one? Well, on watercolor, because it's glazing, right, um, you would want to do that where you paint it around these objects very carefully because you would, whatever background color you had would show through the pair. So as long as you worked through um, these areas uh, delicately, you would absolutely be able to do that then. Just, just be careful. You could also, for liquid masking agent will work. Um, as a way, like you can paint all the objects that you want the paper to hold white until you get to it. Then you can do these beautiful ornate backgrounds and then remove the liquid masking agent, liquid first kit, and then there you go. And I have my favorite uh, listed there too, but you can get it a lot of places. So always shop a good price. It's art supplies. Remember, uh, 20 to 40% off list price is our goal. Huh. It's our goal as consumers. 20 to 40. 40, they only do like twice a year. So you have to start to learn places sales to get those deals. Um, but everybody's got a sale where they can drop, even golden artist colors, you can drop their prices. I think it's twice a year for them. Or is it once a year? I'm not sure. They have restrictions for vendors and the vendors can determine when they do it. So you want to learn everybody's sales. Basically just go to all the online art websites and bookmark the clearance page. Not a bad idea. It's not, man. I, I had, dude, if I had to like buy a list price on all my art supplies, I'd be like, so I would not be okay. So that's what I personally do. And that's my recommendation to you guys. 
Um, Heather Jacobs says, thank you. That was amazing. And I want to say thank you for the very nice um, compliment. Tomorrow, if you want to do acrylic, we're going to take all those metal studies that we did last week, last Thursday, and we're going to test our knowledge on a metal horse statue to see if we can paint the horse and make it look metal. It was just a fun thing we could do. So that's a great place. So come for that. Um, Saturday, I have the floral rooster. Now, the floral rooster on the acrylic channel is going to be amazing because it's going to be live, live, live. But I'm still going to have the brushes and colors because I did a bunch of pre-work. Oh. I did a bunch of preemptive work. And we're going to be testing that for the first time to see if that works. Right? So there won't be any, like, pre-recorded bits, but you'll get all that student support stuff. <gasps> So much work, but I did it. It was so cool. So that's coming up. Don't miss the rooster. And remember, you can always use any of the acrylic paintings and the traceables and do your watercolors with them. You're welcome to mishmash those back and forth. I'm always good with that. Thank you for another beautiful and fun tutorial. And I think when we meet next Wednesday, guys, we're going to start working on our metal study. We're going to study metal as well. So we'll do something similar to that. That we're doing over on the acrylic channel just like a like a week behind so that'll be really fun be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon